Okay, so let's continue our discussion on renormalization. In the last video, we saw how we can um, evaluate some uh, physical observables and that these observables depend on the choice of scheme. Okay, and the result also depends on the choice of renormalization scale mu. Okay, um, I mean, even though I have uh, already told you that the result should not depend on the choice of mu here, for example, okay, but your predictions will depend on mu because uh, we are truncating the perturbation series to some order in lambda r. Okay, if you could evaluate to all orders in perturbation theory, then you would not have uh, a dependence on explicit dependence on mu. Uh, sorry, a dependence on mu. Also, we saw that um, um, these schemes MS and MS bar and such schemes, okay, they are uh, telling you what uh, finite constants you remove together with the coupling constant, uh, together with the uh, infinite uh, pieces. So, for example, here the choice of Z lambda, ZM, and Z phi, they specify in addition to this pole that you do not subtract any additional term okay you subtract only the singular parts so that is ms scheme or minimal subtraction scheme and we have seen that these factors of log 4 pi and gamma e they always appear in this combination at one loop and if you subtract these also then uh, the result is in ms bar scheme and of course the physical result uh, or the result for a physical observation observable that you get depends on the choice of scheme okay because here you see um, th this is the sum of all these um, I should remove this I think on the next page, no, here. So, after we added this counter term and we removed this 3i over 32 pi square lambda r square 1 over epsilon, okay, this term log 4 pi minus gamma e times this factor together with this remaining term which contains the kinematic part, okay, is what gives you the four point function which enters the observables that you are calculating okay let's say you are uh, calculating a cross section for two going to two process in 5 4 theory so you scatter two particles and you observe two particles in the final state and in that case this uh, these Feynman diagrams will be uh, used in that uh, that calculation so the the result that you get for the cross section will depend on what is what you input from here, right? What is this four point Green's function? But this result depends on the scheme choice, whether you have kept log four pi minus gamma e or not, or you have kept some other constant, okay? So the result is going to depend on the choice of scheme. Um, MS bar scheme or modified, I don't know whether I wrote it earlier. Let me write on the next page. So we have, seen MS scheme modified sorry minimal subtraction scheme okay minimal in the sense that you just remove the singular pieces nothing more nothing less MS bar scheme is min, uh, modified minimal subtraction scheme okay s c h e m -E. okay so in addition here in addition to poles in addition to the pole so we are working at one loop uh, to the pole term we subtract 
log 4 pi minus Euler gamma okay physical observables as I have argued are uh, scheme dependent okay so you are calculating to some uh, order in perturbation theory and you see that your result is going to be dependent on the scheme when you calculate to a fixed order in perturbation theory okay so here uh, I was arguing that some scheme might be better than other scheme even though they are all equivalent but because you are going to calculate the observables to fixed order in perturbation theory okay a particular scheme choice might be more suitable because the the terms which are generated such as log 4 pi minus Euler gamma e okay and the such terms will also appear at higher orders okay uh, and these are not very small terms so they keep appearing at higher orders so your convergence uh, towards the correct answer will be better in one scheme compared to another scheme okay you can imagine that you uh, instead of subtracting this you subtract a large number times lambda r square okay and similarly at higher orders so the, pr the prediction becomes very different now because you have some other large number here okay and you go to one order higher in perturbation theory a similar large number is getting subtracted there so your results are not going to converge towards um, the true result um, fast if you cho make a bad choice of a renormalization scheme so here as you can see that ms bar scheme will be better than ms because such large terms which systematically appear at all orders in the perturbation theory are removed okay so convergence will be better and that is why ms bar scheme is um, often used uh, when when one is working with quantum field theory okay so um, uh, this is uh, one reason why uh, people go to higher orders in perturbation theory because the dependence of the observables the calculated observables on the scales uh, mu and the schemes becomes less and less as you go to as you include higher order terms okay because I mean if you could if you could uh, sum to all orders in, in perturbation theory the result should not depend on such choices okay so uh, this dependence goes down as you include higher orders uh, in perturbation theory which means higher order terms in lambda r but these are not the only schemes uh, that are possible I will tell you of another uh, scheme that you can use so here um, when you are using such schemes subtraction schemes ms and ms bar then you are um, in the Lagrangian or yeah so you are using um, MR lambda R and such things okay as some fixed numbers that you use and then you determine the physical observables in terms of these parameters okay but sometimes you might want to also work directly with the uh, physically uh, physical observables that are measured in the calculation okay and that is also possible it's not not impossible I'll give you an example so suppose instead of using MR you want to work with them physical okay so suppose you are given a theory and um, um, you you uh, you you have written the Lagrangian in terms of M which is the bare mass okay and lambda which is bare uh, coupling constant okay and then you um, split the Lagrangian the way I had earlier told and use a fixed uh, a finite number MR in the in the Lagrangian so your Lagrangian density is now a function of MR lambda R and also 
mu and of course epsilon also okay but suppose you wish to write this lagrangian density not in terms of mr and lambda r but something that you can measure physically for example you may want to directly work with physical mass in the lagrangian density and some other other lambda that is measured i will tell you what that lambda could be in the in the uh, in the theory okay so let me describe one uh, such scheme so let's look at first two point function okay and we have seen that in the perturbation theory if i sum all the terms this is one particle irreducible okay and so forth where one particle irreducible so here i'll just put these two vertical lines to to tell that these are amputated okay that these amputated means um, limbs are cut so these legs are cut they are not part of uh, part of the diagram meaning you don't have to include a factor of i over p square or uh, i uh, sorry i over p square minus mr square for this and for that that you don't have to include and this is what we had defined as minus i sigma okay and um, with this the structure of two point function becomes okay and you already know that the structure of two point function is that it has a pole at the physical mass and the zero of the denominator which is where the pole lies gives you the physical mass right so this gives you the condition that piece uh, where the physical uh, gives you the condition the, the zero of this gives you the condition to determine the physical mass okay so let's see um p square minus mr square minus sigma p square that is 0 at p square is equal to mp square okay so if i put p square is equal to mp square i get mp square minus mr square minus sigma of p equal to mp square okay so i have put p square is equal to mp square here okay and that's the condition you get now suppose i want to choose a value of mr um no suppose uh, i have measured in the experiment and i find that the particles have mass mp okay now instead of choosing some mr in the theory which is finite and determining mp in terms of mr i want to choose physical mass as the parameter that appears in the lagrangian itself okay in the renormalized lagrangian lagrangian okay so i don't want to use some mr but i want to use mp and that's possible because that would require that uh i choose mr to be mp okay and the condition this condition now turns into this condition okay where i put mr to be mp that is what i want to have that's a choice i want to make and this says that the sigma at p square is equal to mp square should vanish so that's the condition if i can satisfy this condition then the uh, then i can I, i can use the physical mass for mr okay and one can then determine what is the uh what is, what does this imply for the renormalization constants okay because that's something you still have to fix okay so um you see that making this condition will make the physical mass uh, appear in your in uh, 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 sorry making this choice will make 
m r equal to the physical mass. Now I also want to make another um, requirement that I wish to have the, the two point function to have the following structure. So I have already written here that the, I mean, sorry, but that's, that is the structure. So there is nothing special here. Also, you have other regular terms at p square equal to mp square. The other thing that I have done is, you see, you, we always had a residue here. Okay, it was not one. So the residue was one when we had free theory, but the residue was not one when we had a interacting theory. Okay, so, but let's say I wish to have the structure of the propagator in the renormalized theory such that the residue is one here. Okay, so that the propagator is that of a free particle of mass MP. Okay, and that we can arrange. And let's see how. So, so the condition is that um, the the residue is is equal to okay it will be more appropriate to say i rather than one because you have an i here okay so that's what i want so that this looks like becomes the propagator of a free particle Okay, that's what I want it to be like and then I should determine what should the um, renormalization constants be if I uh, require this to happen. Okay, so let's look at that. Um, so what I'm asking is that, so now let's go back here. This is how it looks like. Okay, I over P square minus M R square minus Sigma P square. So, let's look at the denominator of this, okay, which is, as I showed you on the previous page, P square minus M R square, but M R I have chosen to be M P already, okay, minus Sigma of P square. Okay, so that is what it should, it will look like when I put it in here, okay, where I, MR I have chosen to be MP. So, now uh, let us write it in the following manner. So, I will tailor expand sigma of P square. Okay, so sigma of P square around p square is equal to mp square okay where the pole is so sigma of p square is sigma of mp square plus p square minus mp square evaluated at p square is equal to mp square plus other terms, okay, plus higher order terms. Higher order terms in P square minus MP square. Okay, you are expanding close to MP square. So these are terms of lower order compared to P square minus MP square whole square. Now this first term, the constant term sigma MP square, that is zero from here. Sigma of MP square is zero. That's the condition of having the pole at Oh, uh, that's the condition of having MR equal to MP. Okay, so that is zero. 
Now I have this term and other terms. Okay. So what becomes of this denominator? It's p square minus m p square minus this term p square minus m p square. I will just write in short here, I will put mp square and then you have this term with the minus sign minus half p square minus mp square whole square delta 2 sigma over delta p square whole square value to write mp square and then other higher order terms. Okay. So let us now this is equal to this. Now let us uh, factor out p square minus mp square and that gives you 1 minus delta sigma over delta p square evaluated at mp square minus half p square minus mp square so one factor of p square minus mp square is pulled out it's here times delta 2 sigma over delta p square whole square at mp square plus higher order terms in p square minus mp square Okay, so the next term will be p square minus mp square whole square. Okay, so this is what you get in the denominator. So what you have at this stage is um, here. So at this stage, let's call it denominator. This is. Um, so denominator now is p square minus m p square times um, let us call it f of p square ok whatever that f is. So your propagator the two point function sorry is i over p square minus m p square times f p square ok. And what is f p square? f of p square is the term in, in the square brackets. Okay. So now you can read off the residue. So um, the residue is i over f of m p square. Right. You have to put uh, in i over f p square p square equal to mp square and that gives you the residue of the pole. Okay, so the residue is this. Okay, and how much is that? That is i over, let us go back. So when you put p square is equal to mp square, this term goes away. All other, all other higher order terms also drop out because they all contain factors of p square minus mp square. Only these two terms survive. Okay, so you get 1 minus del sigma over del p square. So, you get residue is uh, 1 minus delta sigma of p square over delta of p square evaluated at m p square. Okay. And we want the residue, residue to be i okay, because we wanted everything to look like a propagator of a free particle. So, for that to be true, this derivative should vanish when you put p square is equal to mp square. So, we get the condition okay. that is another condition. So, um, I will leave it as an exercise, it is easy.
we have done already uh, uh, equivalent of this in the case of MS and MS bar. So this you will be able to do. So find the expression of the Zs and Z phi's if these conditions have to be satisfied. Okay. Find the expression of Z phi and Z m um, such uh, at one loop at order alpha s sorry not alpha s sorry <laughs> lambda lambda r such that the above conditions are satisfied Okay, so you'll get uh, with this you'll get the residue to be iota and the um, the the renormalized mass will be equal to the physical mass. Okay, so find out what Z phi and Z m you should choose, right? Because uh, infinity the infinite term the singular term you have to subtract anyway. Okay, and uh, these differences in the scheme can only be uh, accommodated by changing the finite constants that you subtract okay so that's going to change only the expressions of uh, finite parts of zm z phi and whatever else you have okay so because as you have already experienced that uh, looking at the propagator you only fix z phi and zm not the z lambda so that is why this uh, in this exercise i have asked you to find out what z phi and z lambda zm are okay now let's look at the uh, four point function how come i've got this okay i should add more pages here Okay. So let's look at four point function now. And again, these are amputated. So I'm looking at an amputated four point green function. And that amputation I will denote by putting these small ticks. Okay, so amputated four point function. Okay, so suppose you measure this, which is uh, which is something you can do by measuring some cross section. Okay, of uh, two going to two scattering. Okay, and because this will be an input, so it gets measured that way. And suppose I want to work in a scheme, a renormalization scheme, in which I say that this object at s equal to 4 mp square and t equal to 0 and u equal to 0, okay, has a value which you want and you call it minus i lambda r okay so in this case you see you are not choosing some arbitrary value of lambda r and then finding what this fourth point function would be but rather you are saying that i want to use that lambda r in my perturbation theory which equals the value of this amputated four point green function at a certain scale Okay. Remember, you have to choose a scale because then only you will get a constant for the, uh, the, the, the terms that 
differ in these um, where did that go what is it just a second here see this z lambda z m z phi i could have a constant here a constant here and another constant here okay at order lambda so these terms which you have here they are constants okay these constant differ when you go from one scheme to another scheme okay and that is why to have a constant you choose a scale okay because otherwise the result will depend on the the kinematic factors also okay so you choose a fixed scale and on that scale you say that uh the value of this four point green's function is lambda r okay and so you you say that when s value which is you remember that s is p1 plus p2 whole square okay so you are saying when this is 4 mp square and t is equal to 0 and u equal to 0 okay you should figure out the physical meaning of this okay that will be a nice exercise to do that uh, at these values the green function is minus i lambda r okay when you demand this this will give you uh, this will fix the z lambda that you should use okay so this is another exercise i leave it for you to do find out the um find the expression of of z lambda okay and the calculations that we have done earlier uh is what you are going to use to determine what z lambda should be to order lambda r okay so i hope that uh, this will help you clarify that clarify the nature of these renormalization schemes and this um, uh, renormalization constants how to fix them okay you can choose to write the the perturbation theory using physical parameters like physical mass and lambda r of this kind which i have written here in front of you okay i call it physical because this is uh, something the left hand side you measure in experiment maybe directly maybe indirectly but you do measure it and you say that that's whatever value i get at some scale such as s is equal to 4 mp square and t equal to 0 and u equal to 0 that's a physical number that you have measured right so that you can use uh in the perturbation theory or you can use schemes like ms or ms bar where uh, you choose some finite mr and lambda r and determine the physical observables in terms of those so either way it's all they are all good whichever is suitable for your uh, for your purpose typically in quantum field theories like qcd uh you use ms or ms bar schemes okay they are more suitable in that context okay we'll stop here and we'll continue our discussion in the next video